the rest of the Gospels. By the way, Gospel is different from Gospels. Gospel is the good news. Gospels is referring to the four, what they call synoptic Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Alright? So part of attending a Bible study is you get more educated. <laughs> so you do not say, can you share the Gospels with me? <laughs> you share the Gospel. Alright? So how this thing is John from the rest of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and John? Uh, well, scholars will tell us that John was probably written a lot later. Okay, about between 70 and 80 and 180. By the Apostle John, the beloved, at Ephesus. Ephesus is a common day Turkey. All right. Aimed to both Jews and Gentiles. And of course, Samaritans. But Samaritans are also considered impure, so they're Gentiles too. Okay. Matthew is written for the Jews. Mark is written for the Romans, which is also Gentile. And Luke is a combination of both. But John basically incorporates all of these different audiences in his letter. It's considered the most theologically and philosophically profound. Why? Why is, I'll give you an example. In the beginning was the word. What is that? Unless you know a little bit of theology and philosophy. Uh, and the word was with us. In the verse 14, you look at verse 14 later on. So, it does not narrate the birth of Jesus. The three actually records the narratives of Jesus' genealogy. Okay? So if you look at Matthew, for example, the father of, the father of, the son of, the son of. John doesn't have that. Instead, John begins with Jesus as eternally existing. So it went back to as far as creation. And we will look at Genesis 1, 1 of 5 later on. To we have a parallel of John 1, 1 to 5. It does not share any sizable box of teaching with the three other Gospels. Probably with the exception of two um, portions. But the rest, it looks like it's an independent Gospel by itself. Whereas in Matthew, you can find the records in John, in, in Mark, you can find the records in, in, in Luke as well. <coughs> so who would like to volunteer? Anybody with a nice pair of eyes? I did. Okay. <laughs> okay. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and, the light, and that light was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. 
that testified concerning me, he cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has so passed me, because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, and his closest relationship with the Father has made him known. Quite profound. Yeah. This probably will tell you the summary of the whole uh, book of John. Okay, so now let's look at the purpose of the book. The purpose of the book of John is to present Jesus as the Messiah, the Chosen One, the Son of God, sent to earth to fulfill all that the Old Testament anticipated, bringing new life, eternal life, to a dark world. Okay, so the Old Testament actually presents the coming of the Messiah. And the book of John presents, here he is, here he is, the Messiah, the Son of God. Okay? Not through the fulfillment of the law, remember I told you about the Old Testament, the law? Not through the fulfillment of the law, but by the miracle of grace. Alright? It's not because of your works. It's not because you have done this. Okay, but it's because of God's grace. But this grace, this theme of grace, is so all encompassing in the Christian life, so that we can come to a point in our lives when everything that we enjoy in life is God's grace. It's His gift. Even our life, even our life, our family, our children. They are God's gifts, our friends. So, we realize that all of these are God's gifts. What do we do with the gifts given to us? We share. We cherish. That word is very important word. That is the same word that the Sami said, Thy word have I kept in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I'm quoting the King James Version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that thy word have I kept in my heart. That word kept does not mean you put it in a package and put it in your storage, never to be seen again for the next five years. <laughs> because you kept it. No, 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 no. That's not the meaning of that word kept. The meaning of that word is cherish. So what behaviorally, what do you do when you cherish something? You prioritize. Mm -hmm. What else? So we, you nurture. Okay. So for example, if you believe that God's gift to you is your husband. Yes. You what do you that. do? What do you do to your husband? <laughs> do you believe it? <laughs> Let's confirm that Christmas for <laughs> You give value to the I'm family. asking the wives. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She's silent. That's why I'm, I'm just asking. Uh, hey, uh, why are you putting words? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just asking. <laughs> it's okay, Brother Ray. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, wife, I said. Take care of your husband. Take care of your husband. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before you can take care of somebody, what do you do? You take care of yourself. Definitely. Yes. You take care of yourself, and then towards that person that you cherish, what's the fundamental thing that you must do? No. You don't. No. Okay. No other person. Yeah. So how how? How does the person whom you love receive the message that you are cherishing him or her? I didn't hear the rest. Yes. Express your what? By what? Okay. <laughs> 
ka po, you're listening. <laughs> Record it yan. Question na gan pa sa ako. Ayan, kakabi mo na. So, I've been, I've been sharing so many was... good things about cherishing your love, your nurture. You know, the very first item that you need to do as part of your cherishing mm -hmm. process. Spend time. You spend time with the person. What else? Prioritize You prioritize. And, and, and they summarize it in one sentence. I'm telling you this because I value you. I love you. <laughs> it was only me and you. <laughs> service role, it starts with the word V. Value, validate, value. 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 You validate the person. So how do you validate the person? Appreciate. You appreciate? Okay. So your child is a gift from God. How do you validate the child? Yes. Okay. You affirm the child. Alright. You thank the Lord in the presence of the child. The child was given to you as a gift. Okay. You express to the child that he or she is extremely significant, who has brought you a lot of joy and Question. Do you do that to each other? I'm excited. Yeah, that's not. But uh, sometimes it comes uh, as a as a form of uh, uh, reminder of correction. Alam mo ba na ang mahal ka natin? That's what they always say. I'm the only one who can tell that to you. Because I'm your wife. Grabe talaga ito. Si Tess. Ay, mga ka. Grabe na nga. Alam mo, hindi na kita. Alam mo, hindi na kita. Yes. So this is all part of this word cherish. I grace. Uh, life is a gift. Friends are gifts. Family is a gift. Okay, we need to cherish them. We need to value. We need to value. Okay, and we need to communicate that to them. I'm going to give you a. I'm going to work on this high school later on. Nobody ever outgrows the need for validation. Yes. Hindi pa na ako niya na five seven five two two pano niya. Because we always ask that we are validated at work. What? Or we just assume? That's what I have a question. Why is it sometimes like what Doctor Lang said? Ah. We were always, especially if you are the, the supervisor of the board, it's part of your day to always validate one of your uh, subordinates. But uh, why is it that when it comes to relationship that's intimate, sometimes it's hard to do that? Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm expressing to you things that may be assumed, but they're not easy. Especially if you're coming from a confusion based background. But I'm not sure how to because I'm getting proud of it. Chinese, Chinese they, don't, uh, they don't say, uh, oh, you're good, son, you're good, son. The Chinese do not do that. What they will say is, why did you need to improve here? Yeah. Did you hear? Pas did you see that uh, post in social media where the dad uh, made this post that uh, he said he was unlucky, but he was doing it 
this has been a positive uh, reason. He was unlucky that uh, their child's IQ is lower than him and his wife. That's a Chinese uh, oh, yeah. Have you seen that before? He said. <laughs> Can you do that to yourself? I learned that early in my parenting. And many of you know the story of my son. You know, he, we were living in TV Road, uh, right there by the Casa Linda area. And he went to school there, and one day he came home with an 80. You know, so I reprimanded him for coming home with an 80. He said, that cool, cool. My friend Pedro had 35. <laughs> But you don't bring 80 in Val Gonzalez home. Yeah, because I don't know what 80 is. I mean, growing up, I haven't received any 80 in my... Yes, because my good friend from California was my fellow professor coming from a Chinese background in Singapore Bible College. He said, uh, in his home, a it's not acceptable. A plus. It has to be A plus. <laughs> yeah. So right there and then, going back to better story, I learned this son of mine, he is not going to be an academician. <laughs> sure enough, you know, he became a professional hip hop dancer. And that was a struggle too because what? Pastors will dance hip hop? So I have my issues too. You know? Especially when he said, like, Dad, can I pierce my ear? <laughs> <laughs> and the hair color. Yeah, the hair color. And one time he came home, he had a blue color here. <laughs> it's like, Tamaho. You remember that, Andrew? Yeah. And this year? You're in <laughs> Don't get mad at me. He says, You have your bell bottoms. <laughs> I saw them in the picture. <laughs> To be thankful, I don't do drugs. <laughs> yeah. So the struggle with the hearing, because he was failing his algebra. So I said, I will not approve. By this time, he failed twice already. I said, How can he graduate from college? I said, I will only approve your admission. Your, your, uh, you ask him permission to pierce your ear if you pass your algebra. <laughs> oh my goodness, I did all right. After the semester, he got an A. <laughs> he went to a fellow teacher of mine, East Hill College, Rita is her name, who is the president of the Teachers Association. And I said, go to Rita because Rita can do, do a tutorial. I, I made a plea for Rita and you see my, my son. And Rita said, oh, I already understand what he's struggling. He has missed certain formula. He has skipped that. The same that happened to my daughter. So I had no, no more reason but to have his ear views. <laughs> Pastor son. Yeah. Grace. Grace, you validate each other. Okay. Because they are God's gifts for you. So here's the focus of this gospel. Matthew focuses on Jesus as the Messiah. Mark focuses on Jesus as the one who answers in the kingdom, the coming of the kingdom. Luke focuses on Jesus as the one who welcomes the outsider. Alright? So if you are if you if you are outside of uh, the Jews, the Jewish circle, Luke is a good message for you. And John focuses on Jesus as the eternal son of God. So, uh, just a clue, here is a key passage for you. Alright, let's all read this together. John 20, 30, 30. Now Jesus made the other signs in the presence of the disciples. Which are not the religion this These are the religions so that you may be Jesus is Christ, the Son of God, and that the living and the life of His name. You may be, not may be. So that word, believe again. 
So let's go to the prologue. The incarnate word, John 1, 1, 18. I combine the two topics together. Uh, so remember the text that uh, Brother Mark read to us, John 1, 1 to 18. In the first verse, Jesus is the eternal, pre-existent word. The one of a kind Son of the Father, the Son who is Himself God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with us. Alright? So us, the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Son. Okay? By the way, right there and then you see the Word. Well, you do not see the Word, but you, you, you assume the Word the relationships there, Father, Son, or Holy Spirit, from that word us. Every now and then, you will hear me talk about relationships, which is the key to living the Christian life, to discipleship, to becoming a church member, to moving missions, to establish relationships, not to transfer a concept. Verse 1. Well, the eternal word has become incarnate in history. And, and he became flesh. That incarnate is coming from the word carne, which is the word for flesh. We still use the word carne today, but in Ilivino they refer that to beef. Chicken is not carne. <laughs> but Carne is actually flesh. Incarnate became flesh. In history, meaning this is part of a historical narrative. This is not just a figment of one's imagination that Jesus came. Okay? He actually came in flesh in history. In this prologue, Jesus introduces many of the major themes developed later in the Gospels such as Jesus as the life, the life, the truth, believers as God's children, and the world. Okay? We look at this more specifically as we proceed. So somebody read to us Genesis 1, 1 to 5. Can you read it aloud? Genesis 1, one, one verses 1 to 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and He separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. All right, thank you. Now, somebody read to us again, John 1, 1, 5. John 1, 1, 2, 5. In the beginning of the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been created. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all my time. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not come. All right, thank you. So just from memory, you're all educated people. What are some of the parallels that you can see in Genesis 1, 1 to 5, and in John 1, 1 to 5? In the beginning, yeah. from the very start, we see that. What else can you see? About the light, mm -hmm. all right. What about the light? The light, the light shines in the darkness. Okay. By the way, you will not be able to see light if there is no darkness. All right. Darkness intensifies the presence of light. Okay, so there is a contrast there. And then what else do you find as a parallel?
before I say the important, I say what I'm about to say is that the equivalent of God's people in the Old Testament today is the what? The church. Okay? Because today we call ourselves God's people. So before we become very harsh towards the Jews in the Old Testament, let's remember that in many ways we are like the Jews. remember that in many ways we reject him. Yeah. That's why when you read the Old Testament, do not be so harsh and angry towards the Jews. Unless you fit my psychological description that whenever we are get irritated by somebody, that somebody is so like us. You know why we get irritated at our children? Because they're so like us. We tend to be kind towards the children of other people. But towards our own children, we become very, very harsh. Especially if that child looks like you. And acts like you. So, can I ask a question sure. on that? Uh, you said that. Uh, his own rejected him. So is that is that possible because uh, uh, some of those who are originally his only knew him as a concept and and because there's no genuine relationship there. Well, they had a lot of misconceptions about Jesus Christ. Uh, one misconception is they were expecting a military ruler. Mm -hmm. They were expecting somebody who can actually alleviate the misery from from those who are um, basically giving them a lot of trouble, particularly the Roman Empire. So when they talk about the Messiah, they talk about somebody who is riding on a horse. Like King David, you know. Yes. Uh, then of course they were surprised because somebody was riding on a ladder. On a camel. Yeah, so that's one of their misconceptions. And the other misconception is that if I follow the Master, if I follow the Messiah, all my troubles will go away. So how many Christians today ay nagtatampo sa Diyos kasi hindi in-answer yung prayer nila positively? I was praying for that promotion, but you did not give it to me. Because you see, there is such a poor and there is such a poor theology of suffering today among Christians. Today, what you hear is you have Jesus, you can preach. And we look at blessings in terms of things. So you become things oriented. So, what happens when suffering is allowed? So, they don't go to church anymore. You know, they, so, that's a form of rejecting Jesus, right? what Jesus represents. Mm -hmm. So our misconceptions could be very, very true. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Dali na matapos ito, alam ko kung kaya. 9 to 13, what do these verses teach about becoming a child of God? Chapter 1. Chapter 1 to the time. Hanggang verse 18 na tayo. 9 to 13. Enlightened. That's the word, enlightened. Yeah, um, when you are enlightened. How do you become a child of God? According to the pastors. We see and believe. Yeah. By the way, again, you receive and believe. Which comes first? Yeah. So this, this word... These, these words are combined together, repent and be baptized, uh, believe and repent. These words are actually combined to emphasize a point. It's not meant to divide, oh, one should do this first and then do the other. No. Yeah. no. They are a whole enchilada. <laughs> so, so believe and receive, they're part of the same experience. Because believe is right here, cognitive, you receive is to be this. You take. 
So, as of another question on that. So, how can one be a child, and how can one cannot be a child? Yeah. So you cannot be a child if you reject the offer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the offer is forgiveness and eternal life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And and, and 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 we can know all of this, but not really do something about it. So here's another thing about the scriptures: uh, that the change in behavior is not just because of emotional upheaval, but because of a shift of thought process. What? So the Apostle Paul says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you shift your thinking after what you have been presented, and then your feeling follows, and then your behavior, you act on it. The book of John, first John is very good at that. If you obey me, if you love me, obey me. So when you talk about loving God, there's no question obedience follows. If you say you love God and you do not obey, my friends before I was a Christian would say that's BS. So I cannot justify that the example you gave us, you know, uh, that two friends talking, they said, you know what, let's go to this place. Yes. Anyway, after we've done this, we can go to uh, the church and confess to Father, yeah. you know, that. Uh, and then it, it, it absorbs us from that uh, yes. yeah. bad things that we're... So, so, so uh, I'm glad you brought this up because uh, part of what I do right now, I am retired, no, retired. <laughs> <laughs> is I write articles in my blog, pilgrimsreflection.com. My latest article there is about religion, religious or spiritual. Mm -hmm. and, and try to differentiate what is religion from spirituality. And religion is, okay, I just follow the rituals. Okay? But in my heart, I have not changed. Yeah. Religion is also what I call godly talk. Where our spirituality is godly walk. Religion is who's in and who's out. Okay? We have an institution here. Uh, those of you who would like to join, you have to follow our policies. Spirituality is inclusive. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but not eternal life. It does not say whoever among the Jews, or whoever among the Filipinos. Very inclusive. Okay. So, uh, unfortunately, you and I can play religion or our own for our lives, especially if, we, if our heritage is such like your father is a pastor, uh, I tell my son, son, I'm a pastor, but I'd like to let you know God doesn't have grandchildren. Only children, okay? Doesn't have grandchildren. So if you want to be with God, you have to embrace you it your by course. yourself. Right. You have to do it yourself. You cannot say, why are you a Christian? Because my father is a pastor. What verse is that? Because I got married to a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> So here in verse 14, the greatest event in human history that the verse announces. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Yeah. Can you it, please? The, first. Okay, the word become, became flesh and made this glory among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace. Yes. So, my first question is, what does this mean to you personally? Verse 14. And how do you understand the term glory in this verse? The word in flesh and will among us. Question 
Yeah, of course. Now we understand the term we already passed out. Yes. And you could cross reference it to Exodus 33 18. Yes, it's a story. I think uh, from the outside, it's hard to really appreciate what Jesus meant to, to us. That's why, unless you have that relationship, that's the only way you can really appreciate uh, what He really is for us. Because looking from the outside, it's just, you know, difficult to really understand why are these people like this. Especially if you if you are reminded of this uh, community of origin, place of origin. Mm -hmm. You know where he came? From Nazareth. Nazareth. Nazareth, what, what, good, can what good can come out of Nazareth? There is no TV in Nazareth. Okay. People there cannot afford even to buy a radio. Okay. It's very poor. So, how can you say that the Son of the Living God will come from the very poor place? In the biblical times, that's considered a slum area. Yeah. So, somebody read Exodus 33, verse 18 to 33. Allow, please. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. And I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. What part of our physical body is mentioned in that passage? In Exodus? The what of God? The face. The face of God. That word face is related to the word glory. Okay. So you're asking, you're asking me that I'll show my face to you. You will believe that you have seen my glory. There are so many things that you will ask, but for you to see my face, cannot lie, according to the Singaporean, cannot lie. Why? Because nobody sees the face of God in live. So the best description that I have is the radiant light. It's a radiant light, so radiant that once you are exposed to that light, you die. You die. Yeah. So you cannot see. So you see how gracious God the Father is? He wants us to see His glory. So what did He do? He sent His Son. In His Son, we see His glory. In His Son, we see His radiance. In His Son, we experience His presence and not die, but live. You see how powerful it is? So if you want to see God, look at Jesus. Now, I'm going to extend this even more because we cannot see Jesus today and a lot of people will draw and paint Jesus. All right. Who do they see? Who do people see the dead? Believers, you and I. <coughs> Question. When they see you, do they see God's glory? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I cannot fail. That's why I never really believe that 
you know, Christian hospitality is really what brings people to, to Christ. Although the Bible itself is offensive, but the, the believers should not take that as an excuse to be offensive to others. Mm -hmm. So that word glory there becomes a verb. It becomes, it, there's a word actionized. It becomes verb. I'm laughing at the term. It becomes an action word, that word glory. But what that means is they will see the presence of God. So how do you allow your life to shine if you are not if you are not present with people? If you're away from them. People yeah, I like the verse you shared with me, Pastor, Colossians 4. Yes. 4 through 6. Can you read it? Yeah. Uh, it became my favorite <laughs> verse. Yes. Colossians. Uh, this reminds me that uh, we are all uh, a work in, in progress. Colossians 4. That's four, right? That's four. Yeah. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Yes. So, so, let the pouring out of our life Oh, how I'm validated when I hear people say, you know, I came to the Lord because of you. I was encouraged because of your life. Those are sweet words to validate us because then we are sharing even just a little bit, we are sharing a big portion of God's glory to that person. So, verse 15 to 17, who is this other John here? Because the writer is John, the beloved. This John, who was sent by God, is John the Baptist. What does the Lord reveal in verse 15 to 17? Verse 15 to 17. Saying, This is the man I spoke about when I said, 
He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace of the given. For the law was given to Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So Moses did not give grace. Christ gave grace. Mm -hmm. Why was Moses unable to give grace? Because on, in Exodus 30 to 28, when the law came down, 3,000 people died. But when no one the Spirit came down, 3,000 yeah. people No one is righteous. Yes. Moses yeah. was not righteous. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because Moses lived a sinful life. Yeah. 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 He committed murder and all this. Yes. But only Jesus lived a sinless life. Right. Okay. Only Jesus fulfilled all what is anticipated by the law, as written by Moses. So take note. The passage does not contain any single command to obey, but simply, but simply to believe. I'm talking about John 1, 1 to 18. It does not have a command. It simply gives us news to believe. So in your own words, what does grace upon grace mean in verse 16? Verse 16, grace upon grace. That word grace is repeated there. That means God's grace is really beyond our uh, human understanding. Nobody can exhaust God's grace. That's what I think. There's a continuity. So, God gave us eternal life through His Son by grace. Mm -hmm. We will only be able to sustain this life continuity mm -hmm. by grace. Okay? It's grace upon grace. So, we need a time of you. Okay. Don't work too hard. To earn God's love. In your best, all of this is His grace. Okay? It is grace. We try our best, okay? We fail some of the keys in the guitar. It's okay! It's God's grace. We're not going to be judged. <laughs> Because we missed the key. Yeah. I didn't apologize the way we had. That's grace upon grace. My question to you is, which truth in this passage strikes you the most? And let's combine this. This is end, this ends our lesson. Now, how do you apply the lesson from this passage in your own personal walk with God? So attempt to answer one of these. You don't want to answer both. Which strikes you the most? And how can you apply this in your own personal work right now as a wife, as a husband, as a parent, as a colleague? How much are you disciples see salvation It's all about relationship. So it's not a concept. So meaning as a Christian that you need to nurture all all areas of your relationship. First your family, your spouse children, your child, church, friends. Cherish. Because if I am time wala, ano ka, scholar, I mean, the way you speak, you will see that you can, I mean, scholar, ang dating na ano mo, ang pagsasalita, pero you don't nurture your relationship. Kaya di ba minsan may mga, ano, even the family did not listen to, to that person. So, Maybe she's missing, or I mean, that person is missing something. So, in that person. Relationship. Yes. Ako pa siya yung giving God all the glory by us being Christians um, should be Christ-like in a way that people will see Christ in us in the way we live our lives. Mm -hmm. The words we speak, the actions that we do. And if people are blessed by the, the lives you show to them, then 
that will be glory to God. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 So, yun na rin pa to, to glorify Him. Saka makikita nila na. Mesa ko dyan, ha? Kaya, yun lang pa to. Are you struggling with your health during the delivery of a yellow? Yan. Very critical moments. So, the Lord has blessed. Sa akin, Pastor, ha? If somebody will ask me, like two years or several years from now, Uh, what would you say really matters? Uh, it's not for me to be able to express my opinion on, on religion, politics, or everything uh, in whatever form. But it's just to be able to share uh, the unending love of Christ to everyone. That's what really strikes me. So, so I don't care if my if my verses are not really exactly the way it's written, that's not really what's important. I don't care if uh, I was not able to share my opinion about religion and politics because those are things of temporary. Even, even election, they will change in four years. So whether I say my opinion or not, it doesn't really matter. They will change whether I do something or not. But to be able to share to others the Uh, an inexhaustible love of uh, God towards uh, humanity. That's what really matters to me. So, 
that would be like in terms of the Torlan's version, a legacy for me while doing this. And it's not we are not we are not asking for rewards, but it's actually glorifying Jesus Christ in that part. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. has been a blessing to you. Uh, we're going to meet again in two weeks. That's another Saturday at 11 o'clock. Try your best to be here, I mean, somewhere. somewhere. Uh, oh, we, need to be, we need to be starting at, at 11. Um, the other thing is I need uh, somebody to volunteer to coordinate uh, where are we going to meet again, you know, uh, the contact. Uh, because uh, we need another volunteer to host uh, our next study, which is going to be 5th, 12th, 19th, June 19th, right? Mm -hmm. Can I create that at Facebook page and also we can upload that? Okay. Um, So our next topic is going to be from verse 19 until verse 11 of chapter 2. We'll be looking at John the Baptist in the start of the ministry of our Lord. John 19 to, to 11. Yeah. Well, I thank you everybody for coming. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our heart is full. And now we are going to proceed to the fullness of our stomach. Uh, and by the way, I would like for us to take a picture of the attendees for the inaugural meeting. But let's have a prayer first. Shall we pray? Our Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for this passage that we have just reflected upon. Thank you that our understanding of you has been enhanced, that you have existed even before time. And Lord, you have given grace to us so that by receiving and believing in you, 
we can experience eternal life. And that is life that is abundant, life in its fullness. Thank you also for reminding us that the Christian life is called to shine so that your glory will be revealed to us. And so I pray that our lives will become even more of an encouragement to others, especially upon those we have relationships with. So I ask that you continue to guide us, and grant us wisdom, so that we will not remain the way we are, but we will grow towards becoming more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. We voice a special prayer of thanksgiving food that we are to partake in the strength of the right to this and thank you for the fellowship we have with one another. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.